Olympic Park days watching old players such as Peter Blasby, who I saw last week who was at the game, who was probably someone I looked up to back in the day, as long as well as Mirko Runja back in the day from when I remember back uh, when I was, well, was still called Melbourne, Croatia. Players that stand out to me or that I can remember was always like watching Tommy Pongliak, um, Mark Shilich, um, purely on the basis that they were players that my father would have loved me to be, but I was always too slow and not, not skillful enough. So I remember uh, watching them weave in and out of players. Other players, yours on Tolovic, Davor Todoric. I remember my dad once jumped the fence at Olympic Village. He scored, a, I think he scored a hat trick against Heidelberg, and he climbed over the fence and kissed him on the middle of the ground at the end of the match. And my earliest memories was watching the, the older players, Tommy Cummings. He used to be fantastic to watch. Brogan, Gilder up front, Shaw, Gardner. So some of those old defenders were always good to watch. Aren't they the Kokoschkas, those guys? Billy and uh, Horse Row and those guys, and then Laila Bishka, and you know, we had brilliant players. And we had some, um, like George Hanna was a brilliant player. Club man and a good player. And One of the best I've played with would have been uh, Jelko Azic. Um, he was just phenomenal. He was that quick and, and so sharp. Um, and I don't think we've seen the best of him, unfortunately. Yeah. And obviously you've got your Mark Badukas and uh, you've got your Dan Tiados that went over. And you got Frank that obviously kept in uh, Germany for a long period of time. I know we had some players with great talent. You know, Mark Baduka was a great talent. Uh, Joe Shimonich was a great talent, uh, Bishka was a great talent, uh, Tommy Cummings, Steve Kokoschka, probably not a great talent, but a, a, a great player. Uh, I watched Billy Wojtek play, I watched Jimmy McKay play, and I, I, all those boys had a lot of talent, uh, and, and for them it was probably easier to play soccer than two blokes who, to me, always stood out with probably not as much talent, but had great heart, and that was... Uh, George Hanna was one, and and Aunt Beloved was the other. Probably weren't the most gifted players, but they had tremendous hearts, and that's what uh, I've always got great memories of them. Because with them, it was uh, it's a never die, uh, never say die situation. They never uh, never conceded. Always wanted to win, like every other player, but they just had that little bit more drive. My favourite game of all time had to have been, I think, the preliminary final against South Melbourne. I reckon it's probably most people's favourite, just because of the lead up to the game, um, the game itself, the events that unfolded during the game, the atmosphere, everything. It's the one that sticks in my mind, always. And that was the semi-final where it was pouring down with rain and where we won 3-2. And I just remember, I think Danny Tiado got sent off in the 50th or 20th minute. And all I remember after the game was, I was full of confidence, going to Adelaide and said, we're going to win this grand final the week after. And we did. I suppose the most memorable game is your first game, I suppose, when you play for the, for the first team. So there's a 16 year old kid. Um, Miron put me, I remember Miron put me on and he said to all the senior players, do not have a go at him. If he makes a mistake, it's okay. Just giving confidence when he's out there, and when he said that, it uh, made me feel a lot better to go out there and play. So, thank God for the coach who gave him good words to the senior players. Because those, those days, they had a lot of English players in there, and they weren't shy to um, let you know if you get anything wrong. So, um, it was good. But the one that sticks out for me the most would be the 89 90 season, last game of the season. It was a double header out at Middle Park, South Melbourne's old ground. I remember it was South Melbourne and St George Budapest in the first game and we played against the, what was then called Melbourne City, with Footscray and Just. In the second game, we were playing to stay in the finals in the top five at the time. And uh, Just was playing for its survival in the relegation zone. That 2-0 victory over Just, which saw us make the finals, but more importantly saw them relegated. We were in the car park, I remember listening to the radio, and they read out that Blacktown City had beaten somebody, and whoever else was in that relegation zone had won their game, and Footscray Just had been relegated, and shortly thereafter folded as a club representing that particular artificial community. Um, it was yeah, one of the best days that I can remember at any soccer match that I've ever been to in my life. <laughs> 
neprijatelja koji su nas stavno tražili da nas unište, ali hvala Bogu nisu mogli. I remember a bit of Carlton here many times, and they had some good travelling fans, which always made it good for the atmosphere. Uh, as a player, I think being South Melbourne is always good, when Sween scored a, a bomb here, and when we beat them 2-1, uh, Bob Jane. That was the first probably grand final, and it uh, was really atmosphere unbelievable. I played on front of the 100,000 people, but I would say that the Olympic part that time was really something special. I still haven't brought myself to watch the uh, South Melbourne Grand Final, not even on YouTube, not even a clip. Altona Magic Final, I was heartbreaking. Um, seeing when we lost, people had tears in their eyes from when I turned around. Mm, I've got about I've got three bad ones. <laughs> Two against Adelaide City, we lost in the finals. And I think you were a player in those games, so yeah, that would. Yeah, it was shocking. And against South Melbourne, I still just can't believe how we lost that game. Up by nil, last five minutes, I think that's equalised. Went into penalties. I think we scored the first three. And they missed the first three, I think it was. It was something weird. And then all of a sudden, we just started missing all the penalties. And they just started scoring him, and finally at the end I think it was like one, six, seven or something, and I won. Just can't believe it. The biggest success was when Croatia went to the first time in the first Vitorijsk league. That was the first story that Croatia made in Australia. Uh, the 94, 95, and 95, 96 seasons. Um, as a seven or eight year old, you know, being national champions and 94, 95, when my man brought the TV into the christening and everyone had to watch it. I think by now on ground. Um, by now on ground, uh, we became totally independent. Didn't rely on anybody. Where we're sitting right now is something that very rarely crops up anywhere in the world, let alone in Australia, where a community can come together and build a stadium from, and these were working class people from, from suburbs that were working all sorts of, all sorts of jobs, families, mortgages, etc., that could take a thousand, fifteen hundred dollars out of their pocket back in the 80s, put it towards purchasing you know, a piece of land first out of Rockbank, I believe, and then out here, and then end up with, with a facility like we have today. Now, some people might say it's you know, not the most flash stadium going around, but what it actually means, the, the foundations of this, of this club and this stadium mean more than any Amy Parks and whatever else you've got floating around Victoria now. now this, is, this is what the community built. Melbourne Knights has done plenty for Australian soccer and I even keep telling them now, for the you know, last few years I said, you know, they keep knocking us or nothing. I said, just have a look at the national team like now. We're still there and we will be there and I think there's still a lot of people who wants to play for, for Melbourne Knights. That's the one, go, one good part about it, Pave. You know, all the NSL days, I used to go, I went a couple of times to, um, to Canberra Institute of Sport and say if there's about 12 or 14 kids, we could have signed 10 of them because one thing, we're not, we never promised them a big money like other clubs, but we, prom we did promise them, you're going to train with the first team, and you're going to be past, part of first team, you're going to be a squad of um, 18 or 19 or 20 players, and it's up to you to prove. And that's why we did produce so many good players, which they've gone overseas, and not only that, they play for Australia. You know, they play the war, not only Melbourne, um, not only Melbourne Knights, uh, you know, uh, badge, but they also wore Australian badge. Started off my juniors career at what was then Essendon Croatia in 1981. The juniors top that we wore back in 1981 playing out of cross keys, so the long sleeve number eight. Bishka wasn't around at the time, so I see myself as being the four, <laughs> forerunner to Josip Biškic before he made the number a little bit more famous than what I did. Played down there under nights, my dad took me down there. Um, the coach was um, Ramiak, remember him? I played for a year older because dad pushed me a bit earlier, obviously. Wanted to go to the club and drink with the boys down there. And then from there went down to Cross Keys. 
where Mark's dad was actually our coach for one, yeah. or, one year or two years. Yeah. The committee made this decision, you had to go play in your own age group. So I had to leave that team, had to go down. And we had like, we had a very good team, a successful team. We always make the finals, always first or second in the, in the, in the league. Yes. So we did okay. Yeah, they were, they were, yeah as you said, always first or runner-up. Probably, I think, more runner-up than first, because our main rivals were Sunshine George Cross or Sunshine Heights. Was My memory was we were always number one. <laughs> Probably the most memorable one was the wedding because that was the year they won the Doherty Cup and um, Frank couldn't attend but he um, actually from the, the toilets, if you stood on your toes you could actually see number one grind so he did go to the toilet quite a few times. Um, what, what happened when they asked him about the time? Yeah, he just was soccer mad and obviously during the wedding he was thinking about the game when I asked him what time it was he looked at his watch and he said oh it's now half time. <laughs> So, um, yeah, he was just, and then of course after the game was finished, they, the whole team came into the reception, so that was a really, for Frank, as, uh, plus it was his birthday, and the, the, the wee one, and it was our wedding, so that was a big day for him. What was your first paycheck, Marcelle? My first paycheck was 50 cents. <laughs> no, I played for the love of the club, mate. For the love of this club. No, but really, what was your first pay? It was like $10. Yeah, it's all right. But then I ten dollars, and then I went to the canteen, bought a hot dog and a drink, so it all went back to the club. See, I'm always giving, <laughs> always giving. In the old days, um, I suppose a funny story is membership. I think was twenty dollars. My dad came to Australia with forty dollars and paid twenty dollars membership. All well, mine bought me here pretty much. Bought me to every game as a junior. As you come here, this is Croatia. It's Croatia for everyone, for every generation. Once it's in your heart, it's in your heart forever. I remember uh, my grandparents coming here. Uh, my grandfather was still alive. My grandmother was still alive. That uh, often come here, and yeah, it's a it's a place that uh, I think is it holds a special um, place in everyone's heart. Not just now that I play here, but you know, people in the past um, that have gone before us. It's just something about it. It's you know, the red rocks are ugly as sin, uh, but yeah, there's just something about it that's very special and there's a place in my heart, that's for sure, and I'm sure there's a, it's a place in everyone's heart that uh, has been here, you know what I mean? I just think the, um, the first generation that came from Croatia here to Australia, you know, did a magnificent job, you know, from Olympic Park to not having our own ground, to all of a sudden having our own ground, having our own stadium here. You know, it's what, probably one of the best stadiums in, in Melbourne, you know, without a doubt, apart from South Melbourne, I suppose. So I think the first generation Croatians have come to Australia. It's made things a lot easier for us. And as a, as a community as well, it brought a lot of people from everywhere to the club, and it's good. Mm -hmm. I, we appreciate what they've done for us. Yeah, and I think you just, you know, using myself and Mark as an example, we've known each other for about 30 odd years now through soccer. You know, we started playing soccer at the same age and I think there's quite a lot of kids out there today who are the same. I mean, our two sons play juniors together as well. So, um, and so yeah, they're still yeah, close and they've got you know, other friends that they've made along the journey as well. Mm. And when they're long gone, we're long gone, still be here. There's still be Crow kids coming here. Yeah. Our kids and their kids will come here. So that first generation has done excellent for us. I reckon. Very well for the Croatian community.